We got any Digimon I, I fans in here? I love Digimon. I love uh, Plant Dude, Dino Guy, Bird Brain. Yeah, all your favorites. But what is this thing? Yeah, the, yeah what is this? The Wonder Swan is, it looks like this. Oh. That thing. Isn't it pretty? It is. Yeah, it's, uh, well, this model, the Wonder Swan color, came out in 2000, but the first Wonder Swan was black and white, and it came out in 1999, which was a weird sort of renaissance period for handheld gaming consoles. It you was, know, uh, it was! It was post-Game Boy Color, pre-Game Boy Advance, so around that time a whole bunch of people came into the scene wanting to take their share of the market. Stuff like Tiger's Gamecom, SNK's Neo Geo Pocket Color, and this thing here, the Wonder Swan. Now this one here, unlike those other systems, was only released in Japan. It was manufactured by Bandai, maker of toys and fine video games. Well, some of them are okay, I guess. <laughs> some. And while they had a working agreement with Mattel to publish it here in the States, that never actually happened. So this was a, Jap a Japanese exclusive system. Really weird, because it had a ton of support from a lot of really big companies. Squaresoft, Capcom, Taito, a whole bunch of them made exclusive games for this thing. Making it all the more exciting, what we're going to see tonight. Yeah. I have no idea what to expect. So, like, uh, how big was it or so? Well, about this big. Oh. Yeah. The thing's big uh. selling point was that it was tiny, it was extremely portable, and it launched at 4,900 yen, which was less than the cost of your average console game. So, a super budget system, designed by Game Boy creator Gunpei Yokoi, by the way, mm. who uh, split with Nintendo following the failure of the Virtual Boy. He started up his own company called Koto Lab, where they developed this thing and several games for the Wonder Swan. Unfortunately, uh, Yokoi died before the thing could see a release, but... His legacy lives on in the many hundreds of games that launched afterwards. Let's get started. Let's see this thing. All right. So, 1999, The Wonder Swan launched in Japan with a selection of seven launch titles. And for a minute, let's pretend, let's go back in time, let's pretend we're there. Mm -hmm. We're a very lucky Japanese kid whose parents love him very much, and thus he has every single launch title. We are the nice. most spoiled kid on the block. We rule, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I love my life. I love being a rich child. Go we on. We deserve it. We're cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, even if you weren't the rich kid, you probably, if you got a Wonder Swan, you checked out this game here, Gunpei. Let's start her up. Now, despite being a black and white system, they did a lot of good things with color depth. And Alex was commenting before the stream that a lot of these games had really strong art styles. Yeah, like Just in their use this. of shading and all. This was a 16-bit console. It just had very weak uh, color and sound capabilities. <laughs> that guy's cool. That smug guy. <laughs> that guy rules, honestly. What's up, buddy? Look at that. That looks cool. Really is nice. Should also mention games like this are vertically oriented, so you would hold the thing on its side and use the twin D pads for input. So one of the D pads would be like X, Y, A, B. Yeah. The other one would be D pad. Oh, that's neat. Mm -hmm. Basically, a Super Nintendo controller's face when you These use it. These guys. Like that. Oh man, there's Nick. He's cool. Oh my god, Domingo. Domingo. We're getting divorced, Danny. I'm sorry. <laughs> A new husband, Domingo. Uh, Domingo, I'm sorry I'm divorcing you for Patrick. Oh. Moving up through the ranks here. What do you think of Sorry, Thomas? sorry, Patrick. It's time for Thomas. Oh, it's I Thomas am, time. This is getting costly, actually. Yeah, you better just marry him all. Oh my god, Bobby. Hello, Bobby. Big Bobby. And uh, who's this? Well, it's the most sexy one of them all. Pike. Oh my god, Pike. I have Look at those one, buck two, teeth. Three, four, mm. A lot of new husbands now, Danny. Sorry. <laughs> well, great. Welcome to the family, everyone. Gunpei, your husband simulator. <laughs> husband simulator. So yeah, this is Gunpei, uh, named after the Wonder Swan's creator, Gunpo Yo Gunpei Yokoi. I don't think he had anything to do with the design of this game, so it's just a tribute. This later came out for PSP and DS, I think. 
Uh, you may have played those at some point, or you may have not. The game's kind of obscure. What makes this one different is it has a story mode, which Ooh. I'm pretty sure is not in any other version of this game, so let's check that out. By the way, we're going to be going through a lot of games very quickly tonight, so don't fall too much in love with these games. We'll be switching <laughs> them out pretty frequently. Oh, this is a whole world of animal people. I love this! This game rules! The character designs I actually like, yeah. Nope. <laughs> this is so good! And that's how the story goes. You come across all these criminal vermin and you beat them in puzzle matches. <laughs> As for what Gunpei is... Oh, I'm really good at this. Automatic match. So, unlike block-dropping puzzlers, this uh, makes pieces appear from the bottom and they scroll to the top. And you have to connect them the length of the screen. What? Oh. Oh. Is that an attack? I think I was attacked. And by doing things like that, you can do combos. Oh. Which in this case damages, damages your opponent a little bit more. This reminds me a little bit of Pipe Dream and oh, one arcade game in particular. I don't know what it's called. I think it was by Taito? It was basically this, where you arrange these tubes to go across the screen horizontally. Is it called Tubit? Does that sound familiar to anyone? Uh, hmm. It's really obscure, don't worry if you've yeah. never heard of it. <laughs> and there's little mechanics here, like these uh, mystery blocks, which obscure your pieces. Yeah, all in all, decent little puzzler. Made a pretty good showing on the Wonder Swan, especially at launch. It's no Tetris, but come on, they weren't gonna get Tetris. <laughs> That's a Nintendo thing. So I want to win a match here before we move on. Let's try and do that. And this is fun for a while, but... I may be missing something. But this game seems to be sort of critically flawed. Like... If you don't get pieces in a certain lane, there's really nothing you can do. You have to have at least one piece in each lane in order to make a full horizontal match. Which is kind of a problem sometimes, because sometimes they just don't give you pieces in certain lanes. I'm by no means an expert, though. Please, please correct me <laughs> if I'm shit at this game and don't know anything. Please leave angry comments on our YouTube channel for all our uh, terrible gunplay uh, play. Mm -hmm. Our terrible gunplay, as it might be. Uh. Probably something as else as an idea. Uh, gunplay. <laughs> I don't like the way you're pronouncing it! Yeah. Gunplay. <laughs> no, hey, we won! No. <laughs> yeah, this did get a DS release. Mm-hmm. And bam! Dead. <laughs> this game rules, actually. I approve of its use of uh, cartoon sound effects. That's Same. pretty good. Its friends like, uh, I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> And you're like, no, 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 no. You're dying. You're gonna die. That's good and pay. Uh, okay. If that looked interesting, check it out. There's a whole bunch of systems you can play it on. Moving on, because this is a busy day in Wonderswan world, our next game that we got at launch is Chocobo's Dungeon. You know this guy. You've okay. seen him before. You may have heard of the company Square and its mini games released for the Super Nintendo and PlayStation 1. Kind of a big name to get on your side uh, in the portable console wars back then. And I believe this is a port of their PlayStation roguelike, uh, Chocobo's Dungeon. The first one of which was never released here in the States, though they did localize the sequel. Other things Square did for this thing, uh, I keep calling it this thing, like I, this like is, it stinks this or something. This like I'm hanging, like I'm holding it with two fingers. Like it's a literal swan or something. About to drop it in the garbage. <laughs> oh yeah, might as well discuss that. So they chose the name Wonder Swan based on. Let me see. I actually wrote this down. Because mm -hmm. this is important. They chose the name to highlight its aesthetics and technical capabilities because the swan is recognized as an elegant bird with powerful legs to help it swim. <laughs> Much like the Wonder Swan it's itself, great at swimming. 
With powerful legs. With powerful legs, it specifically says. Just... So yeah, if you're wondering the uh, the reasoning behind terrible console names like Dreamcast or Wonderswan, yeah, it, it usually makes no sense. Wonderswan! We never miss leg day. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, if you like RPGs, the system's got them. Because in addition to this, they also released ports of Final Fantasy 1 and 2. Which, at the time, were actually pretty big upgrades. You, uh, we later saw them here in the States on the Game Boy Advance as Final Fantasy Origins? And wait, that was the PlayStation one. The uh, DS one was Dawn of Souls, I think. Mm. If you've played those versions, uh, the Wonderswan versions are pretty much identical. But still, those versions came out several years after the Wonderswan editions. Mm. So if you had a Wonderswan in those games, you were a pretty cool kid back then. They also later ported Final Fantasy IV to the Wonderswan Color, which we may look at later, because I'm curious to see how it turned out. But back at launch, all you had was this Chocobo spin-off game. It's a potion. Hey, quit drinking our potion! But no! Give that back, you muggle! I mean, moogle. Moogle. <laughs> Same thing. And yeah, so far this seems to be a typical Fushigi no Dungeon game. Uh, Shirin the Wanderer is part of this series, if you're familiar. Mm. Well, there's way more setup in this than I thought. If you like tons of text with no gameplay, I've got a you game to show you in a minute. love Chocobo's Dungeon. Because this game ain't got shit on the game that's coming next. So yeah, randomized dungeon crawler, turn-based... Uh, Basically in the style of the Shirin games, only with Squaresoft characters. And on this system, it came out looking pretty good. Character designs are good, the art, again, is pretty great really good. for a yeah. monochrome system. Actually. If you want a roguelike, check it out. I'm gonna move on. <laughs> we only got a few minutes to work with here. <laughs> Alright, so... Next up... We got... <laughs> yeah, let's continue the theme. Digimon Adventure. Who likes Digimon? We got any Digimon I, fans I in here? I love Digimon. A lot of people really like Renamon. But I, know. I love all the Digimons. I know they do. I love uh, Plant Dude, Dino Guy, Bird Brain. Yeah, all your favorites. Bird uh, Brain. Wolf, Wolfie. Kangaskhan, Slowpoke. Uh, let's start this up because we got a lot of words okay, to go. look through. Uh, our name is Ryo. And if you may recall, Digimon, pretty popular back then. Very much a worthy rival to a Nintendo's Pokemon. So it's natural that Bandai would want to capitalize that on the uh, launch of their system. Being like, hey, we got Pokemon, but better. This is us, we're Ryo. We like looking at computers. Mm -hmm. But then one day... Hey. It's a monster! A digital monster! You know, I heard the digital monsters are the champions. What, really? Yeah. And here's where you get your digi watch digi device. I think that's what it's called. I, I feel bad. I was a Pokemon fan. I yeah, yeah, Digimon. same. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, folks. Dude, people tell me the Digimon cartoon is like legit for real good. <laughs> I I've don't know how. I've actually really heard that. I don't but... know how much I believe them, but people say no. It just it kicks Pokemon's ass. They had rules. some good, they had some, I forget who, I forget the uh, an anime director who worked on the, some of the series and some of the movies. They're really good, so. Hmm. Maybe worth checking out. Here's our friend, Dinosaur Boy. Uh, he has a name. What's his name? Maybe he'll tell us in a second. Agumon! This is Agumon. Our first Digimon. And this ends my knowledge of Digimon. <laughs> so you no. see here, this is this is an RPG adventure punctuated with these little uh, anime-style cutscenes. Mm -hmm. The overworld sprites don't look as good, but the uh, the character art in general is okay. It's recognizably Digimon, so if you're into that, you would like this. Also, if you like text. Oh. Oh, Agumon, what happened? Oh, crap! It's Bug Boy. Boy, 
And if you're wondering what type of game this is, it's this type of game. Kind of interesting because while Pokemon did console star R console style RPG, this one does strategy RPG, which you know it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Digimon should do something similar but a little bit different. And this sequence here, you don't actually do anything. I tried this out last night, and I was honestly surprised at just how long this sequence went <laughs> went on. Just wait and see. Just watch through this. Like, this is just an example battle. You think Agumon would hit the guys a couple of times, and they'd take off, and he'd be like, Are you okay? Let's go on an adventure. But instead, this happens. It just keeps going. <laughs> Soon he gets attacked by Betamon. And I missed the name of the other one. Uh. Guy, oh. Punk guy, I don't know. Punk guy, yeah. Punk guy, I just. I'm out of goofs here. The goof well is run dry. I know so little about Digimon. Kukugamon is that guy's name. Kukumongamon. Kukumongamon. Okay, so he finally drained that one monster's health. We get the point, but no, we gotta finish out this battle. <laughs> this takes a really long time. Osada, that's what I was thinking of. Thank you, Apple Saucer. Ah. Uh, yeah, they're a great draw. And there we go. This is Digimon. If you want a Digimon strategy RPG for your Wonder Swan, there's a few of them. <laughs> Not just this one, <laughs> but at launch you could get a Digimon game for your Wonder Swan and be a really cool kid. For a couple years. Oh, and then you meet this guy, oh. and the quest goes on. I'm just gonna end it here. Okay. Digimon! Digimon! Catch the fever. <laughs> the fever? Speaking of fever, uh, just call this one Fever Pachinko. Oh, Pachinko? Uh huh. Fun. Every game system needs a Pachinko game, and the oh, Wonder Swan. One of the few to have one right at launch. Just get off right at, get off on the best foot possible. Here we go. <laughs> what lays ahead of our system's future? Lots of pachinko games. But we'll give this one a try. See if it's worth a look. Um I'm a beginner. Pachinko Q&A? Okay, let's see what this is about. <laughs> oh no wait, there's a full tutorial in here, that's nice. In case you don't know how to play Pachinko. I guess beginner's mode is just full of like instructional stuff. And this looks like a quest, so... <laughs> One day, a uh, drum guy <laughs> did something terrible, it's terrible. Your, uh... Bu <sighs> shit. <laughs> Drum guy. It's written for children, and yet I still can't read it. <laughs> anyway, Hayaku Pachinko. You gotta hurry up and do Pachinko to stop the drum guy. Got oh, it. it's a simulation game. It's a uh, so this is Wall Street Kid, but with Pachinko. Okay, well you gotta do all this Pachinko. Here's your play data. You can also go shopping. Uh, let's go out and play some Pachinko. Pachinko B, C, D. We haven't unlocked yet. Let's just do this one. You can preview the peg layout if you're hardcore about this kind of thing. Alright, are you ready? I'm to save the world through Pachinko, I guess. Let's Pachinko! Oh, look at it go! There it is! That's the game! Uh, Pachinko, if you're unaware, is just a game where you put in money and these balls start to launch out. And you can adjust the strength at which they are launched. Like here, you can make them launch towards the right, or back to the left if you want. And when they land in certain holes, it uh, activates this little slot machine in the middle. This is actually a patchy slot machine, as they would call it. Oh, it is patchy slot, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's really it. You just shoot balls into this machine until you get tired of it. Now on your Wonder Swan, you don't have to go to that nasty pachinko parlor anymore. You don't have to dodge the the elderly gangsters and Yakuza. <laughs> I just assume that's what it's like. <laughs> Everything I know about pachinko I know from Sega's Yak Yakuza series. You know from the Yakuza and it's series, not good. Right? <laughs> 
and yeah, that's uh, that's the basic thing. Uh, this game, in my testing last night, I discovered it has one feature I've never seen in any other game. It's a feature called Key Lock. And when you activate that, as I did just there, it locks the game completely. You can't push any buttons or any directions or do anything. You can't even bring up a menu. It just automatically plays Pachinko for you forever. Hooray! And it looks like it's not even doing that, because even though it should still be shooting balls, it's not. So we are now stuck at this screen forever. <laughs> Maybe there's some key combination to unlock it again, but I don't know. <laughs> That's, it's just a good option to be like, okay, I'm done. Enough Pachinko. We're, we're done. Out of here. Pachinko. We gotta move on. Alright, what are we playing next, Danny? Next up... Oh, we're moving through these at a pretty good clip here. Mm -hmm. Let's do Densha de Go. The Wonder Swan debut from another popular Japanese developer, Taito, in this case. This is a port of their train simulation arcade game. And by train simulation, I mean train conducting simulation, because that's what it is. You conduct a train. In the arcades, this was known for its really elaborate cabinet with all these different levers you could pull, and 3D graphics that show you the different train routes. This is a 16-bit monochrome handheld system, so there's got to be some, some compromises, I would assume. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're waiting here at the station. Give us the go-ahead to go. And we're clear. Take off the brakes and ease on the gas. 10 miles an hour, 15. Oh, we're, here we go. Here we go on our cross-country trip. Gotta use your imagination a little bit more in this one than the <laughs> arcade games. The uh, background graphics, pretty good, even though yeah, the frame rate actually. isn't. <laughs> these are these are nicely detailed. They had to draw a lot of these in order to get the uh, to really give the sensation of driving a train. Oh, and you got a horn. Toot toot. toot. Okay, we're coming up on the next stop in around 400 meters, so we're going to want to ease off the gas and start applying the brakes. This might be a little late. Oh no, I think we're going to go flying right past that. <laughs> As so often happens when I play Densha to Go, I often just go flying past the, uh, the train stations. We're going to do the emergency brake. I'm sorry, everybody. Oh no, we're way over. Terrible. That's that's you are unforgivable. Fired from trains. It's unforgivable. <laughs> Adventures of trains. Yep, that drained all of our penalty points, so that's game over for us. Let's do one more credit. I gotta redeem myself. Alright, give me the go ahead. Break disengaged. Acceleration engaged. Engaged! That's another portable system that came around back then. So's the GameCom! Yeah! Industry was really ripe for expansion then. And honestly, yeah, the Game Boy, a lot of people saw that as, you know what, that's easy competition. Whatever technology we can come up with, it's more advanced than the Game Boy. We can beat this thing. And for a while, that was enough. Uh, for a good couple of years, companies like Bandai and SNK had their own little portables capturing their own share of the market. I think at one point, the Wonder Swan captured as much as 8% of the handheld gaming market in Japan, which is amazing, considering Nintendo basically dominated the thing the entire time. Yeah, actually. And they were they had some really good momentum. I'm going to ease off my accelerator here. Yeah, you're, you're going really fast. This yeah. train is... Slow, slow this train down, but Yeah, we're, we're starting to break here. Yeah, in 99 and 2000, the Wonder Swan had a couple of really good years. Dozens of games came out, people wanted the system, and it was successful. And then in 2001, a terrible thing happened. The Game Boy Advance came out. Oh, no. <laughs> and suddenly, it was the end for every single portable console that had been released around that time. It's also the end for me, because I overshot it again. I was not looking at my... Uh, my my Goodbye, measurements. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. See you later. Didn't I do it perfectly before the show, right? You did it so good, I did Danny. it right on the nose, and yet here it just looks like I'm some drunk asshole who should be dragged off the train and beaten. So let's do that. Damn, Danny! Drag me off, beat my ass, so I never drive a train again. Danny, please beat me to death. 
<laughs> okay, what's next, honey? Next up, Shin oh, Nihon like, Pro this... Wrestling. Oh. Alex, I'm going to, yeah, you need oh, to weigh in on this game. one. Okay, bye, everybody. I mean, hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back, Alex. Oh, no, Danny, no, no. Yeah, not a good sign when Tony Tommy is a developer, oh, but push. we'll see what this does. Uh, this guy's talking about the ring and how great it is. Six dudes all in one ring. Wait. Imagine. Game quarter, is this New Japan? Okay, I know a little New Japan. This is New Japan Pro Wrestling, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, let me tell. I'll let you know which, which of these folks I know. Yeah, which Don't of these know. guys are cool? That guy's still wrestling, and he's super cool. I love. He I looks love cool. You. He Jushin Thunder Liger is the coolest. I don't know if they are. I, I probably know them, and I just I should know some of these guys. You should be familiar with '90s era NJPW. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> cool mask though. He looks like yeah. a fly. <gasps> Oh man, that guy was in the NWO, and he was in the WCW. Oh he nice. He was in NWO New Japan. I mean NWO Japan. Uh, I know Mudo. It was the NWO okay. Japan? Yes! Uh, you know who's in it? Mike Rotunda. Of course. Of course I know about it. Your favorite. <laughs> so, a wrestling game at launch. Not every system, uh, led off with a wrestling game. Pretty interesting strategy here. Good strategy. Every, every <laughs> Good system. strategy, according to Alex. <laughs> I'm just mad that the Okay, oh who God. should I pick? Okay, either Liger or Chono, because... Look at Chono. You should be Chono. Just be Chono. This guy? Yeah, Chono is the okay. coolest. I'm sorry. Now, I didn't actually play this game during my testing, so it may be a big pile of crap. But the presentation, again, looks I love great. this. These games at least had yeah. some sort of a budget. Or at least an art budget to make them look good, even if they weren't especially uh, playable. Gotta hand it to him, Bandai was really serious about entering the handheld gaming market back then. These entrances, not that exciting though. <laughs> I expect I expect them to do more. like backflips <laughs> and for there to be fireworks and stuff. Yeah, y'all y'all like, oh, where's Vader? I'm more like, where's Mike Rotunda in this game, but <laughs> you know me. Oh, man, okay. look at that. Oh, uh, wow, you're oh, big. Oh, that logo looks good. So, big sprites. Good animation. Lots of animation. Yeah, actually. The uh, Tokon Retsuden series was actually pretty popular in Japan for a while. I don't remember if any of those games were ever localized for over here. I think one of them came out for the PlayStation as a WCW game? I could I, be completely wrong. You may be right, actually. I think you're right. Yeah, it was WCW versus the world. Mm. And so far, this seems pretty basic. It's no Fire Pro. No, but... This there was a Fire bad. Pro game released for the, the Wonder Swan, though. Oh. But again, in terms of presentation, makes a great first impression for the Wonder Swan. I'm liking this this little system so far. Oh yeah, choke him out. Aw, oh, oh. damn. Oh, he just dropped me. Stop dropping me on my head. I need that. I need that to headbutt you! Come <laughs> on! Oh, Let you do the kicks. I like that. Oh, rope break. Yeah, not not terrible. Very playable. Not terrible, wow. Considering the wrestling games that come out in early in some systems lifespan, uh, it could be a lot worse. It's no muscle for the NES or uh, or tag team wrestling. God, the NES had some bad wrestling games. But let's move on to the final launch game, and maybe the one people want to see the most. This is Rockman and Forte. Oh, wow. Yep, Capcom is all aboard the Wonderswan train, and they're pumping out a Mega Man game at launch. I can't remember if there was any other system that had a Mega Man game at launch, but this is one of them. Let's see what it's like. Now the important thing to note here is that it's licensed by Capcom, developed by Bandai. Just, you know, so you keep your expectations uh, in check. Oh, oh no, no, Danny, Yeah, no. so you get to play as a squat, kind of pissed off looking Mega Man. Oh. 
or base, aka Forte. That's a that's a hell of a face you're making whoa, there, whoa, Forte. Whoa, hold on. That is is he? What's he gripping? Is he okay? <laughs> he's having he's having a rage moment there. Do we? Do I? No. Do let's, I need to shoo him away? Let's just leave him alone for a while. Okay. Okay. We'll pick him. That'll make <laughs> him feel better. So around this time, Capcom released a Super Famicom game called Rockman and Forte. This, I've seen it described as like a, a related, but not uh, not exactly similar game. So it has some elements from the Super Famicom game, but original level designs and enemies and stuff. And so far, it about meets your expectations for a portable Mega Man game. It, it plays about as well as the Game Boy Mega Man games, which you'd expect, at least. And hey, it lets you play as Forte, who has a bunch of different abilities. He can shoot in eight different directions. Actually, no, make that seven. But still, cool. I think as a trade-off, Mega Man has a charge shot, even though he can only fire it in two directions. Boy, these enemies take a lot of hits. Now, in testing this game out, I actually died in this intro level, so... I'm aiming to, to actually beat this level. Well, good luck. Let's try. Here's where I died, by the way. I went I... over here to collect this item, and yeah, you just die instantly because of the spikes. That's pretty cool. You can also get a bolt or a crystal ball, I guess, if uh, if you really want to. So what's your favorite Wonder Swan game so far? Me? Well, yeah. I, I gotta say, I'm so sorry, but it... Maybe Gunpei. Gunpei's pretty good. It's a pretty decent little puzzler. And, uh... The New Japan Pro Wrestling game, that looked pretty good, too. Yeah, that, that looked surprisingly good. Yeah! If you were I a wrestling it... fan back then, you'd yeah. think that that was, like, the awesomest shit. It was. I'm a wrestling fan now, and I think it's the awesomest shit. Okay, so... Okay, you have a dash. So... Let's try, try and survive. Try not to die. There Success. You go. So from what I can tell, this is capable, it's competent, it's uh, nowhere near a Capcom original Mega Man game. It's very basic in terms of level design, at least at first here. Base, your gun. It's bad. <laughs> also, why must we fight? We are not enemies. Bass. <laughs> God, we haven't played Mega Man 8 on this stream, have no, we? No, it's, 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 it's a pity. And we we really should. Need to, yeah. That and X4 are like, just back-to-back, -back, the greatest hits of the best voice acting of all time. It's Mega Man 8, it's bad throughout, but X4, when it's bad, oh man. Oh, I it love is, X4. It is I the love best X4. Thing. It's so good. X4, actually a really good game. I remember liking it a lot. Oh, extra life. Okay. Really, the impression I'm getting is that this is just a very slow-paced Mega Man. This is a game where you have to really take your time. The levels aren't very long, but they're packed with enemies and obstacles and stuff. Oh, we're already fighting the rock monster? Okay. <laughs> sure, no problem. His goo. You're, you're, he trapped me in his goo. I look away for a second and you're engulfed in goo. Yeah, what the hell? You can't leave me alone for a second. Just Danny. If there's goo around, I'll find it. And you gotta rescue me. Alright, now we have a full health bar, so we gotta beat this thing. Okay, you can shake it off. That's good.
This blob's actually a little difficult to dodge. You have to be in a very exact place. This boss would also be a lot easier with Mega Man since he has that charge shot. Oh my god, is it gonna end like this? Am I gonna die on the intro level? Like that one guy did at AGDQ. <laughs> He died on the intro level of Mega Man X, come on. <laughs> it was a race, everybody was watching. I say like I'm better I than say, him. <laughs> you say as you're getting completely owned by Goo? Yes. I sure am better than that AGDQ guy. Oh, you do so little damage to it, this fight would take forever. But luckily it looks like I'm gonna die. I didn't even do half damage to that guy, that's how weak base is. So base sucks. This might be better with Mega Man, but in my brief uh, time with it, I, don't, I didn't think so. No. I thought it was just okay.